Hello. Before you start writing post processors for Sprutcam, uh, you need to get to know the .NET platform in general terms and how to write programs for it. First, uh, let's see what the .NET platform is. Secondly, we will learn how to install and start using it. Then we will try to write a simple c -sharp program. And finally, let's install the Visual Studio code and see how to use it. The .NET platform is a set of utilities that helps to develop programs for Windows, Linux and Mac OS operating systems. It's open and free. You don't have to pay anything to write programs. In order to start programming, it's enough to install the SDK Software Development Kit. In addition to helping utilities, it also contains a rich set of libraries for frequently performed actions. For example, to work with standard types like number, string or collections, to read and write different file formats, uh, to work with network and so on. After installation, it will be possible to generate executable binary files from the text source code of the program. Let's try to install it. Uh, in the search bar of the browser, just type .NET and one of the first links is uh, official .NET site. We need download page. We will use latest 5.0 recommended version. We need SDK software development kit to be possible to develop build programs. Runtime is only to run, not to build. Let's download. Click to install. Everything by default. Now let's uh, try to run the command line and check will it be possible to run just type .net .net h yes it's available .NET is the main utility to run .NET programs. Now let's try to write some program. Let's open Windows Explorer and uh, create new folder. First folder just for our experiments and next okay and now just empty folder exactly for our new simple program my first program Now let's start from here, new command line. And now type uh, .net new console. We just ask to create simple console application.
now it's ready let's look some new files appeared in our folder first is my program CS approach let's open it uh, the name is equals to the name of our folder because we don't say name in command line program CS uh, let's open CS approach with notepad it's just some description about .NET program output is executable and version is 5.0 anything else and the main code placed inside files with cs extension it's a program on the c sharp language now it's just simple my first program one program class and simple main method it just prints hello world to the console let's try to build our program dot net build okay it's success now let's look inside bin debug we'll see my first program dot exact and my first program dot dll let's start new command line from here let's place it here here we will start to build our program and here we will start our program my first program dot there okay now it prints hello world to the console now let's to change something inside our program open it with notepad again where is it? notepad yes now for example just change our help string hello string hello this is my first program now let's try to build it again oh, here we have main method that has some input arguments we can try to use them for example we just print them to the console also arcs is just array of strings let's print argument zero is first element zero element yes and copy it first and second first second second now let's try to build net build okay and now started and uh, I need to add input parameters parameter one 
parameter two. And for example, in quotes, uh, parameter three, because it has space. And we will see that our program prints our arguments. Now we can change something else. For example, we can convert our arguments to uppercase. Just add to upper. Now build again. Okay. Start. Start. Uh -huh. And now we see that our parameters are in uppercase. In this way, we can write program for the .NET platform. Uh, if we will not use any additional tools, only .NET itself. We have some .NET until it converts uh, text source code of the program. To the output binary executable. And we can start this program. This program uh, can get some input arguments, makes some calculations and print them to the console. Uh, two output files, it's because uh, latest .NET platform version is cross-platform. Uh, the DLL file is independent from the operating system. It's fully the same on the Linux, MacOS and Windows operating systems. But each operating system has its own different starting process. For example, for Windows it's just exe file. Other operating systems will have totally different file format. For the Windows, it's just file with the exe extension. It will start .NET and then will load and run my program DLL file that's independent. From the platform and now let's look at the tools to develop programs because writing programs using notepad it's not comfortable we, we have no any highlighting and building it using command line not so not so beautiful. We need to use some tool. We will use Visual Studio Code. Now let's look where to find and how to install it. Let's open the browser again and type VS Code. And 
The first link is official website. We need download page and uh, Windows platform. It has a uh, user installer. It will be placed inside personal folder of the user and installer that will be placed inside program files folder. You can use what you want. Now let's download. And install. Everything by default. And one note, uh, it's need to add a folder to the path we able to be possible to launch VS code from the command line. While it is installing, we can see on the home page of the Visual Studio Code, it's free and open source code editor developed by Microsoft team. It can be used for different programming languages, but we need now C Sharp only. Let's start it. By default, it should open welcome page, but because I have installed it before, it have opened my last file. Uh, Visual Studio Code has several tabs. Uh, we need extensions tab and to be possible to use programs for exact language, we need to install extension for this exact language. We need C Sharp. Press install. But because I have installed it before, I have no install button, but you will have it after installation. You can open the program. Let's see on the interface. It consists of several tabs. First tab is for file and folder operations. Second is to open to search through the files. Third tab for the version, version controls system git and these you can run and debug, we will see it later. And the last tab is extension tab. Here you can install any additional functionality. For example, you need some additional programming language or some numbered bookmarks or um, Hotkeys, for example, as in Notepad++, you can type needed extension here and install. Now let's open our program. Go to open folder. One more thing is latest.net platform has folder oriented projects. All files placed inside folder means one project. So here we have open folder, not open project button. Let's open our program folder. It 
and on the files tab we will see our files my program cs proj and program cs let's see my program cs proj is just description version 5.0 and here our code and now we see that some message appears uh, C sharp extension ask to add some additional files here because uh, the VS code doesn't know anything about uh, how to build and run programs but C sharp extension can add some additional uh, parameters for example we can click yes and we'll see that new two files was added first is tasks json here we have some comments to build our program it's json text format uh, just structured text representation to configure uh, this code use json format here we have followed the same commands that we typed inside uh, command line terminal dot net build it will start this command itself the parameters for the same .NET build and here additionally it points the name for the program and some additional parameters okay it has also some publish and watch comments but we need build only and the second file is launch json is it says to the vs code how to run our program how to launch our program and here we also see the parameters the program name to start and the list of arguments now let's try to build just open menu run build task and it will show the build task that we see before inside task json inside terminal it shows output file dll and now we can start press some breakpoint and start and now we can go through the code and debug it okay and we'll see that it works it shows to the console some text okay we have no any input arguments so it says error because we are trying to reach some parameters that has that doesn't exist we need to add these parameters to the launch json file let's add the same parameters as we used before 
parameter 1, parameter 2, and parameter 3. And now start it again. Now it works good. Now we can write something new. And we can see that Visual Studio Code will help us. We just Type console dot and helper shows possible variants. We can use, for example, write and what. For example, we can just concatenate our input arguments zero, one, two, and print it. Let's try. Uh, I don't see anything. I think we need to add a right line at the end. Let's try console right line empty and run again. And now works fine. Let's try to add some more smart logic. For example, we can uh, calculate sum of input numbers. Let's try define new variable, integer variable sum for, for input parameters before p1 is int32, try parse. We need to convert string to integer because input arguments are strings we need to divide declaration of variable from using it and the same way for the second and maybe for third And now we convert integer to stri string to in integer and now can calculate some P1 plus P2 plus P3 and print it. 
console right line sum to string and we can add some description sum calls Let's try to run. Now we need to add numbers as input parameters. For example, one, two, and three. run next 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 and now let's see to the visual studio code interface and uh, run and debug tab we have variables section here we have the list of local variables of our procedure. First is input arguments, strings, and local parameters p1, p2, and p3. We will see that p1 already has some value. Now let's try go next and sum has six uh, besides the variables section we can use another way is watch list we can add some additional expression we want to C, for example, sum, and we see that it has six. And another way is debug console. The same way as watch list, we just type our expression, and we will see that sum is 6. If we will type the name of more complex object, we can expand it here and see any of its field. Let's finish and try to explore call stack window to do this we need some additional subroutine for example let's try to calculate factorial we'll have some integer number at the input parameters and factorial is it shows that we have no any results as a return we need to return some value for example we can declare new result variable integer variable how to define factorial we can type it just inside the line
number multiplied to the factorial of the previous number. Uh, but we need to check the last case if the number is less than the one. We need to return one because factorial from the zero is one. Okay, else. Let's try. Oh, we need to call our new subroutine. We have one number as input. Just create new variable f and factorial from p1. And print results f real equals to f to string, and maybe arguments also. Plus P1 to string. And now let's try. Oh, we need one number as argument. For example, four. And what we will have? Let's go inside factorial subroutine. We have four as the input argument. Four is greater than zero. So we will go to the factorial subroutine again. And now let's look to the call stack section. We have one separate line for each called subroutine main factorial and factorial again but if we will click on different lines we will see that input arguments inside local variables section are different for the first it was four and for the second it was three this way we can explore and debug our program. And now the result is 24. Okay. Here we 24 also. In this way, programs for the .NET platform are developed. We wrote a simple program that takes some arguments as input, performs some calculations with them, and outputs the result. In the next video, we will take a quick look at what types of applications there are. Thanks for attention.